Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and I'm gonna to try to keep this video as concise as possible, but I wanna talk about pad swapping your Odyssey Maxwell. The Wicked Cushion Freeze Pads and pads from Devon have been out for a long time now, and there's been some other competitors on the market, the biggest and perhaps most talked about recently, being Dakoni. Now just to be fully transparent on my review process, I've been kind of putting out some feelers lately on videos on how you think uh, I should handle certain content. And some stuff has been sent to me for review, some stuff has the potential for affiliate links and all of that stuff. I've typically rejected anything that causes me to have any kind of extra income from my reviews. I really just rely on YouTube ad revenue. I know it's not the most profitable way to run the channel, but I don't want you to ever think that that influences what I say. Now this video is kind of unique because I have a lot of pads here and several of them I have set up affiliate links to and that was per feedback from all of you because you said that you trust me enough to uh, still get money for the channel but uh, maintain transparency. So I want to keep that going. Now for the Deafen pads, it's a generic affiliate link. Just clicking on it and shopping on Amazon will give me a very tiny kickback. I don't even know what it is. I never check percentages but there is a little bit of a kickback if you buy Deafen pads through my Amazon link. Wicked Cushions is somewhat similar. I have an Amazon affiliate link set up to help uh, make some money through Amazon and I use that again to purchase stuff that was not sent to me for review. On that note, Deafen has no idea I made this video. I bought both of their pads for this video to include it because I don't think it'd be fair to exclude them considering how frequently I see them talked about on the Odyssey subreddit, HeadFi, etc. Wicked Cushions had sent to me uh, these pads in the past, along with some head straps I'll talk about later. And Dakoni also sent their ear pads to me for review. Now, I also have an affiliate link set up through Dakoni. Originally, I wouldn't have accepted that, but by doing so, you actually save money too. So with Wicked Cushions, if you use my coupon in the description below, you save 15% off and I get a tiny kickback. With Dakoni, if you use my uh, coupon code, which is Gadgetry Tech, and the link in my description below, you get 10% off your purchase, and again, I get a small kickback. So technically, I profit off of any of these, um, and I'm not gonna use that to influence which ones I suggest. It's also not gonna influence if I say you should buy it no matter what and ditch the stock pads, because there are some merits to the stock pad. Now I wanna start super basic, and that is the pad swapping process itself. Regardless of what pad you use, they all use the same design. The stock pads come off the same way, and all of these pads go on and off the same way. It's a little ring gasket with some hooks. It's actually one of the best pad swapping mechanisms out there, especially for a gaming headset, and you can see just how painless that is. Now you wanna make sure you line them all up before you lock it in place. The Wicked Cushions, on this note, is the smoothest and easiest to get on. It's also the least secure technically if you're you know, grabbing the headset like this and it can twist. There's a chance you'll untwist it. That's about the only drawback of that. When you go to something like the Dakoni uh, Velours, you have a much, you can hear that click into place. It's much stronger um, and it, once it's on, it's on and it's fine. The, let's just on the note, touch on the Deafen pads. Let me look at the left. This is the silk screen version. I'm gonna lock that one in place. The Deafen pads are right in the middle. So the Taconis are the most difficult to put on. Deafen is, um, it's actually quite nice how these install. The Wicked Cushions are super easy. They just seem to be less tight, but I haven't had any issues with them falling off. I didn't know Deafen made two different pads for the Maxwell. I guess I just quickly shopped. Originally, I got the Deafens because everyone talked about the silk material being really soft and more comfortable on the ear. So I buy a Deafen pad and I don't pay attention, and the new version says mesh fabric, and it's identical to the Wicked Cushion mesh. I mean, it's pretty much a perfect clone. The difference is the pad fill, and obviously you have design choices here, but essentially the surface material on your ear is the same. So if you're buying a Deafen pad, for one, I'm not a huge fan of the mesh because at that point, for the small price difference, I would just go with the freeze, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But the silk pad is definitely no joke. It's it's super slick. It's very comfortable and light and cool. So if you are uh, deciding to get Deafen, I would stick with the silk. Now, as far as anything else that kind of showcases why the Deafen pads are a little bit cheaper, it is noticeably built cheaper than any of the other pads here. This little ring that kind of creates a seal on the back, it's a much thinner piece of rubber, whereas all of the others have a more robust gasket material. You can almost see how thick that gasket is on the top-down view, whereas on the Deafen pad, it's a really thin piece. I have no idea how long this will last. I've only had these for about a week, but I wanted to disclose that. The other thing I'm not crazy about is you can hear the glue. 
the glue actually kind of sticks out a little bit for the that seal. So I'm, I obviously don't have long hair, barely have any hair, but if you have long hair and it catches this, I don't know if that'll be a snag issue or not. It doesn't feel as premium when you're handling it, but when it's mounted, you don't really notice it as much because you're really not gonna like grab it that way and stick your hands in. It's just a couple little build quality things where you can see where a couple dollars were saved. Now the Maxwell is a heavy headset, so anytime you're pad swapping, usually most people don't put much thought into the weight of the pad because the headset or headphone wasn't heavy enough for that to make a difference, but there is a pretty substantial weight swing here. Now the Maxwell by itself weighs just over 500 grams and the stock pads, I got a smaller scale just for measuring pads more accurately. The stock pads weigh just over 40 grams and when you go all the way up to the Wicked Cushion Freeze pad, which is the heaviest here, the pair of them weigh 100 grams. So it's 60 grams heavier than stock just by switching to the freeze pads. Now pad dimensions are also important to consider, so instead of measuring every single pad on the video and dragging this out, we're gonna throw a table up on the screen. So there are a few things to consider. One is the front pad depth, which is obviously towards the front of your head. The back pad depth is usually a thicker depth because most pads are slightly angled or tapered. It usually provides better comfort, audio performance, and a more consistent seal. You will see a difference among all of these pads. The other difference you will see is how much height and width you have on each pad as well. The Dakoni pads aren't much larger than the stock pads, both on height, width, and depth. They're actually fairly comparable. In the suede pad, even though it's slightly deeper, it has an actually a slightly smaller opening for your ear. Now I found that it's really hard to find glasses comfort ratings or reviews specifically because uh, one, we have different experiences and frankly, how do you even measure that? So. When it comes to glasses comfort, in my experience, because I use Gunnar uh, blue light blocking glasses, I actually don't mind the stock pads at all. They're very soft, they're pretty springy, but the compliance on the initial compression is not that bad. So glasses weren't really as much of an issue for me on the stock pad. Now, if you to compare it to these guys, the Deffen pads were a downgrade. Not only um, do they increase the clamp force a little bit because the pads are thicker, but the pads are also less compliant. They require more pressure to compress. You can see they're not moving much. They're also a faster rebounding foam. So there's more pressure and resistance on the frame, which can increase pressure in the temple region, again, leading to long-term discomfort. There's no difference whether you get the silk screen or the mesh. So I just wanna point that out. Both of them are my least preferred ones here. Now the Wicked Cushions aren't much better. They are a little bit more compliant thanks to the use of the gel. The memory foam is a slightly slower uh, release. So I think the stock pads still have an edge on the Wicked Cushion Freeze purely on pressure. Maybe not breathability, but I do want to cover that. Now the Dakoni pads are an upgrade for glasses comfort. They use a slow rebound memory foam. It's a very soft memory foam and you can see a big difference of how much it moves in with the same amount of pressure. They also rebound slower, like I said. And if you look at the suede or the velour pad, it's even better. So if you're looking for the ultimate glasses comfort, the suede or velour is my favorite, followed closely by the sheepskin version. So let's talk about heat because this might be another reason why you're considering upgrading and the stock leatherette or pleather pads may or may not affect heat issues for you. We all have different bodies and for me, it hasn't been that bad. I'm not as sensitive for heat when it comes to leatherette, but these do get the most spicy or warm out of all of these pads here. Now the Wicked Cushion freeze pad and the Deffen mesh pad are the next warmest. I'm not saying they get hot, because keep in mind, these weren't even that bad in the first place. This sport fabric does help. You will never get sweaty with either of these pads. Now the Deffen pads heat up a little bit quicker. The Wicked Cushions take longer to heat up, but they also take a little bit longer to cool down if you pull them off their ear. Because of the gel, there's a little bit more of a thermal mass going on. So it's just a physics thing. I can wear it for a very, very long time though. I'm not, again, sensitive to heat personally. And they breathe enough, they're just gonna feel warm but not sweaty. Now, the Deffen Silk Screen have an amazing lightness to them. They, and because they have a little bit lower thermal mass and this silk being as light as it is on your skin, there's less of a seal and it feels a little bit more airy. So for temperature, I really like the Deffen silk screen pads. They actually might be one of the best performers. They're definitely the best performer for the money when it comes to heat. If you're just looking for the coldest pad for the money possible, that's probably it. Now, the velour and the sheepskin. When you get real leather, it breathes in is much better on your skin than artificial leather or pleather. 
that's just a byproduct of this material. And if you're looking for all the sound quality that you get with the stock pad, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I think the real leather is a very good upgrade um, to improve comfort in nearly every regard while preserving sound quality. Now the velour is a special material when it comes to heat because you're gonna have a lot of different opinions online of if people think this is an upgrade or not. Velour does still get warm. Now it breathes a little bit, but it also by nature of this material kind of has a warmer earmuff wearing a beanie type sensation. So it's not that it necessarily feels cooler. It just doesn't feel as sweaty because you don't have a harder seal. Think of it like putting a plastic bag on your skin when it's hot out, that area is gonna get sweaty when you take it off. Velour is a more breathable material, so is this silk screen or any of the sport fabrics in general. So the spicy sweatiness never really happens, but it doesn't mean you won't ever feel uh, hot or warm over time. Now pads don't just affect style and comfort, it also impacts sound quality. In fact, on some headphones and headsets out there, it is a significant impact on sound quality. The Maxwell seemed to be less sensitive to a pad swap, at least when I did my early testing with Wicked Cushion Freeze pads last year. So I wanted to switch all of these pads on the same exact headset for consistency. Now I kept the same firmware on the headset, uh, again for consistency, and I'm using the Odyssey preset for all of these pad tests. Obviously you can EQ it and add your own bass and treble wherever it may be, but I just wanted to explain the philosophy behind this. The Stott sound signature of the Maxwell is excellent. That's no surprise, nothing has changed here. Now the big kicker, just to start, when we switch to the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad, it had very similar sound characteristics. Some people like the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad more because the extra pad depth added a little bit more bass to the low end, which a lot of people enjoy. Now, that same time is the bass is perceived to be deeper because the mid bass was slightly lower. You can see that when you look in the 100 hertz, 150 hertz region, it's below the stock sound profile. There was a little minor change when you get closer to 2000 hertz, and then the peak at 2700 hertz is a little bit hotter as well. Most of the frequency response changes are minimal though, and because of the increased pad depth that helped a lot of people for comfort, the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad has been a very popular pad for a long time. Now when I add the Deafen Mesh Pad, which is the same material on the surface as the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad, you get similar characteristics as well. There are a couple minor changes. One, the bass is just slightly less prominent, and I measured this multiple times. This is an average. It's a very minor difference. You're talking less than a decibel difference in bass, but it does scoop a little bit more in that 200 to 250 hertz range. The mid-range is essentially identical. The scoop or notch that you get as a byproduct of changing pads closer to 2000 hertz, also nearly identical, and so is the same peak that we find at 27 hertz. The biggest change I noticed with the Deafen pads is they sound sharper and more sibilant in the eight kilohertz region, which my rig also measured. Now, even if I were to add the Deafen uh, Silk pad, which is the same exact price, and it measures almost identical. To clean things up a little bit, I'm gonna get rid of the Wicked Cushion Freeze pad now, and let's change the color on the Silk, just so it stands out a little bit better. That's a little easier to see. Almost the exact same characteristics as the mesh, but the silk actually has a little bit more of that base again. Um, it's comparable to the freeze on the base region, but just like the mesh pad, the silk is sharper in the eight kilohertz region. So if you just straight up pad swap and you're not familiar with what to do with EQ, on the deafen pads, just pull eight kilohertz down by three or four decibels and then just go from there. You can take a little bit more off and tweak it to your liking, but the upper treble is definitely lifted on the Deafen pads. Now looking at the Dakoni Sheepskin pad, you're gonna see the sound quality is almost the same as stock. I left the Deafen mesh here just so you can see how different the mesh is, especially in the upper treble I talked about earlier and in that 200 range where there's a null. So I'm gonna hide that for now. And you can see the Dakoni Sheepskin pad is nearly the same. There's a slight peak at 2700 Hertz. So if you really want it to match and you're doing parametric EQ, um, through your software on the computer, focus on 2700 hertz, minus three dB with a Q of three, and you effectively have the exact same sound as your stock pad. So if you haven't switched anything before, this is a pretty safe swap with minimal differences on sound quality. Now the biggest change on your sound quality is if you consider the velour pad. It is a massive difference in most cases. Now there is a huge bass drop. You can see that once you go below 300 hertz, most of the bass is gone. It doesn't sound as light as this measurement suggests. It does a couple things, but you lose a lot of the depth of bass. So if you like your Maxwell's for that 
20 to 30 hertz sub bass that most gaming headsets simply can't do, the Velour is not going to do you any favors here. It's definitely a reduction. Now the mid-range tuning and the upper treble, if I hide the sheepskin pad, the suede is excellent. It's actually one of the best for upper frequencies of all of these pads, period. It's very smooth. It's a little bit better filled in in the upper mids and treble. Frankly, because the bass is reduced, it's going to sound a little bit brighter. It's almost like you're tilting the sound profile towards treble. So uh, on the screen to make it easier, if you like all the ideas of everything I've said with the velour pad, but you want that bass shelf back, this EQ I'm showing is going to restore that as much as possible. Now, even if you EQ up the bass on the velour pad to kind of fill that back in, there is one downside to using velour. It's going to sound really nice and airy on the upper mid range and treble region, but the dynamics of the bass, the tightness of the bass is stunted and softened just a little bit. So if you listen to a lot of rock or you like your, your bass to be extremely tight and clean sounding, the velour pads aren't really going to help there as much either. It's just a little bit softer. I don't mind it. The only reason why this was noticeable is because, frankly, I have three Maxwells and I put them all in the same EQ profile and I just kept swapping between the same, uh, all three headsets on the same track with different pads and that's how I was doing a lot of A-B testing. Same thing with video games. The suede pads are great for gaming. So are, uh, honestly, all of these. It, it doesn't really negatively impact your sound for gaming. Without EQ, these are super clean. They Because they reduce the bass, it's nice for FPS games. But if you want FPS performance and sub bass, you want that punchy bass and a good clean tight sound, uh, then you would stick with the stock pad. You would look at something like the Wicked Cushion Freeze if you want, again, bass and the tightness, or just simply step up to the $80 sheepskin pads from Deconi and spend a little bit extra. Now, hopefully after watching all this, I didn't make your decision more difficult. If I did, I'm really sorry, but I try to stick to as much objective stuff as I can that takes my opinion out of it so you can decide what's more important to you. Now, I've been using the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad since they came out for the Maxwell because the stock pad did get a little warm, but my biggest issue is I started touching the baffle after a while with my ear, and that can lead to long-term discomfort. The Maxwell uh, Freeze Pad, was close enough in sound quality where I didn't feel like I was degrading this expensive headset's performance. If money were no object, I would lean towards the uh, Deconi leather, the actual sheepskin one, only because it is closer to the exact stock sound and it has a little bit better breathability than the stock pad. It's a little bit softer for glasses, so when I wear my blue light glasses, it's nice. Um, and because my ears aren't that large, I didn't need a huge pad. Now, there's obviously pros to Velour. Some people already want to Velour and they just want to know what it sounds like and if it works well, and now you have that. If you have larger ears or in your, you're in a really hot climate or both, then the silk screen version of the Deafen Pad is pretty nice for the money. Honestly, it just feels so cool in a hot climate. So I really like that. It's not made as nice, but there are some pros there. I don't like the sound quality impact as much on the Deafen Pads because they make the upper treble too strong. So I did have to EQ that down on both of them. The Deafen Mesh, I don't understand the reason to consider it, just because it's almost a clone of the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad, but with lower quality. Even the pad fill, like this isn't, when you look at a top-down view, it's kind of bumpy. It's not a consistent pad cut, and the Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad is much more consistent. I've had hundreds of their pads and never had quality issues. So for a $2 difference, spend more on the Freeze Pad personally. If you want to customize it further, this isn't a plug for Wicked Cushion. I'm sure there are other straps out there, but just to throw this out there, the stock pad has three holes. Wicked Cushions came out with a silicone strap that gives you four holes so you get more height adjustment. And just to show you how it compares uh, width-wise, it's not going to make as much of a difference in overall sizing unless you have a smaller head. If you go to the small setting and you need more small, then get the Wicked Cushion strap. Because of the extra holes, it is offset just a little bit. Everything is pulled in like a millimeter or two. So it might be just right, or maybe you again want to customize it to match your headset. Now, if you want to compare any of these measurements yourselves, I have links in the description below to take you to the Squiggling site so you can play with it. And uh, just a reminder, if you want to purchase any of these, a lot of links in my description below will save you money as well. It's not just about the kickback. Otherwise, purchase it wherever you like. No pressure. I won't get upset. I promise. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can see you at the next video. I'll see you next time. Bye.